Hi, Rob Taylor from Wine Spectator here in Napa Valley at Guderian Winery with co-owner Natalie Copeland Hall and co-owner and winemaker Shana Harding. Um, Shana, why don't you tell us a little bit about how your winemaking career brought you here and what led you to start this winery? Sure, Rob. Um, so, basically, I was um, living and making wine in Napa Valley since around 2008 and I've worked for a couple of different wineries and an opportunity came up to work at the Honeycutt Wine Facility which has a um, really nice custom crush program um, and a bunch of really great well-known winemakers here and I wanted to sort of accelerate my knowledge and learning so I came on here and started managing the, the custom crush program and I was hopeful that if I was you know a studious employee that I would be allowed to one day start my own wine brand. Natalie and I have been friends for a while and wine geeks together for a while and when I was ready to start our brand um, I reached out to Natalie and I was like hey you uh you uh want to start uh, <laughs> what you doing? Uh, <laughs> so um so yeah so um Starting in 2017, um, I was lucky enough to be able to reach out to some growers that I've been working with on a bunch of other projects and kind of carve out a niche uh, to make Chenin Blanc and Pinot Noir uh, for our first vintage. And um, we've started to grow our program as well. Now we have Chardonnay, Rosé, Cabernet Sauvignon, and we will be adding Merlot this year as well. And where did the name come from? The name Gadarian means to gather in Old English, and we just thought it was the perfect name for a wine brand uh, because you gather around a table with friends and family and often food. And so, um, yeah, we, we settled on Gadarian and uh, we love it. So I noticed there is a drawing of a jackalope, <laughs> the mythical beast I'm very familiar with. Yes, yes. Why does your label have a jackalope? One of the fearsome creatures. Um, Shana jokingly suggested a jackalope uh, when we were trying to figure out our palate, and we were doing very important research on Chenin Blancs and Pinot Noirs. Drinking a lot. Um, drinking a lot of Chenin Blancs and Pinot Noirs. <laughs> and uh, I think she thought she was joking when she suggested that our mascot be a jackalope, but I loved the idea because I think they're so cool. Uh, my husband believed that they were real until he was way too old and often when we do tastings we have our stuffed jackalope with us and you would be surprised how many people think they're real um, and I don't want to break it to them that um, I have yet to see an actual one but I don't think they are. Um, but uh, our vineyards have jackrabbits and so we just like to say that the jackalope is the protector of Gadarian. And those vineyards are all sustainably farmed. They're all sustainably farmed. What um, is the viticultural philosophy you look for in your growers? So we're looking for somebody who wants to collaborate with us. Um, so you know we have our end goal in mind of, of the wine we want to make, and, and, and growers are usually trying to grow the, the best product that they can. So we work with people who do all hand work, um, no mechanical work, um, no major heavy inputs to um, soil, no pesticides like that. Um, and just somebody that I have worked with in the past. So we have a couple growers that we work with, uh, different sources all within the Napa Valley, um, where I've been able to kind of experiment with other people's programs before uh, we started getting fruit for our own. So we kind of were able to cherry pick what we think is the best for, for us and for what we want to make for our customers and guests. And I know that the two of you work together uh, to create um, the blends and to arrive at sort of the final wine, but what is the, what is your winemaking philosophy? So I think it's really important to always be present for your wines. Um, I kind of want to nurture my wines so that um, they can grow up to be the best wines they can be, you know, when they come in, they're juice and they're kind of, they're the babies. And then um, I, I want to let the wine do its own thing as much as it can to become the best it can be with a little bit of guidance. So as long as you're always present for your wines, you're always smelling them, tasting them, listening to them, you can tell if something's gonna go awry um, and then kind of correct it. But um, one of the things that I love to do during harvest is to listen to my wines. So we have these two-piece buns that have 
an extra hole in the side and the bottom. So as the CO2 is being released during primary fermentation, the bunks start to sing this kind of high pitch whistling noise. So when I'm walking through the halls and I hear that, I know my primary's kicked off and it's going hard. And then when the sound gets a little bit lower, I can just open it up and I can listen in and I can hear sort of, okay, so am I getting a, a fizz, fizz sort of sound? Because if I am, you know, then we're still, we're still rocking primary fermentation. It's just starting to taper off. And if I hear like a crackle, 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 almost like your Rice Krispies, your cereal, then I know secondary fermentation has started to kick off. So um, just always kind of listening and then smelling and, and tasting and just being there to, you know, hug and sing to your barrels. Which <laughs> <laughs> she actually does. Which I do, whenever I, whenever. So uh, most of our wines, um, they start out as a wild fermentation and then I'll usually finish them um, with a strong clean finishing yeast. And when I am creating the inoculum, I like to um, either sing to the yeast or um, you know, play a little music for them. Um, it's not, probably sound like a crazy person. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, it's I get the ritual. I like to give them a pep talk too, because I'll be like, when, you know, when they're going into the barrel or to the tank or the bin, I'll be like, okay, go, go forth and, and multiply, make <laughs> sweet love, do some budding. Like, um, you know, have lots of yeast babies, eat up those sugars and poop out that booze and you know, it seems to work so far. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all of your winemaking philosophies with me today. Yeah, maybe yeah. It's been a real joy uh, visiting Kadarian today where the wines and the winemakers are always singing. <laughs>